What's going on Aries? How are you doing? Hope you're doing super well. This is the Autistic Mystic and this is going to be your reading for February 2024. So in this reading Aries, we're going to take a look at your overall general energy for February. We're going to take a look at some things you do not see coming. We're also going to get some advice from your angels and spirit guides for you and so much more regarding the rest of February 2024. So before we begin this reading Aries, as always, I do want to take a moment to let you know that you are very welcome here in this space with me as we go through this reading, and I really do appreciate you in advance for taking the time to check this reading out. Now, if this reading does resonate with you, Aries, definitely smash that like button. Subscribe down below if you have not already for future updates. I would also really appreciate that over here, Aries. So without further ado, I'm gonna pull the energy for you and we'll see what is gonna come your way for February, the rest of February, 2024, Aries. As always, I would like to thank the angels, the interdimensional beings, and the spirit guides who are overseeing this act of divination for the sign of Aries. Let's go ahead and see what we got going on here for you, Aries. Ooh. Yeah, really interesting stuff going on here for you, Aries. I do feel like there's a lot of good things coming into your life for February. There's definitely going to be a feeling of a completely new beginning, like you like February is gonna shift your timeline completely, but there will be, I'm telling you right now, for a lot of you, there's gonna be a big test at the end of February. You can mess up all your progress that you made in February at the end. I'm telling you, like the last week of February is gonna be so important for you, Aries. So before we get into the reading, let's start this reading off. Before we get into the tarot, let's start this reading off with some pre-shuffled oracle cards from the universe. And these oracle cards contain the energy that you need more of here for the rest of the month. So the first one is Saturn, which has to do with discipline, limits, lessons, and being really grounded. And uh, it's a very realistic energy. You know, Saturn uh, rules Capricorn and Aquarius. So this is a very realistic approach that you wanna take. And just based off my intuition, Aries, um, and the cards that are coming out, there's, there's something here about you. Don't talk to me about passion this month. Don't talk to me about your emotions this month. Um, there's something about you acting as almost like you're a robot or acting according to a schedule or acting according to logic that is really important for you this month. Um, and a lot of the passion that you're after, a lot of the, the frequency of excitement and being a trailblazer and just anything to do with Aries frequency, you're going to be in your core signature frequency, not in the way that you think you're going to be. So let me just show you the cards that are coming out, the three cards. The energies that you need more of is Saturn, the moon, and also, though, the opposition. Okay, the opposition in astrology is an aspect that pulls energy apart, and it, it makes basically two different bodies, two planets face off and kind of like they're in a very big conversation with each other. And for you... The frequency that you need more of this month is the moon opposite Saturn. When we look at someone with the moon opposite Saturn, if they were born with this aspect in, your, in their chart, don't talk to them about passion. And any child born with the moon opposite Saturn, give them some Legos to play with. Give them a spreadsheet. Give them a task to do in sort of a, a mechanical way. Okay, don't talk to them about passion. And so this month for you, it's really about 
showing up and not letting your emotions get in the way of productivity or not letting your emotions get in the way of structure, order, discipline, and dare I even say, law and order. I understand that this is not what a lot of you want to hear, Aries, for the rest of the month, but it's a little bit of a paradox because I feel that a lot of the fun that you're chasing or a lot of the new experiences that you're going to find are on the other side of you being more so robotic than usual this month. You're going to have to really follow through with your word. You're going to have to, and there also may be something about you going back and forth between a lot of structure, order, discipline, and then going into the moon energy of receptivity, feminine feminine energy in your emotions, but it has to be it has to be in a logical way. Okay? It has to be like from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'm gonna work. And then once 8 p.m. comes, I could put on a movie with my significant other or I can do whatever I want to do that's fun, but there needs to be a set time where you work almost like a robot. Like I said, anyone born with the moon opposite Saturn, give them some Legos to play with and don't talk to them about passion. And so this is what's going on. So let's continue. Um, there's definitely something big coming into your life as well in love. I do sense that Aries, but let's go ahead. When it comes to your opportunity for, um, the rest of February or February in general, you have the four of swords, which has to do with stability and healing and, you know, resting. But I feel like there's some sort of um, situation that's more so to do with balancing your life and becoming more orderly or structured, i.e. the moon opposite Saturn is very important for you. Okay. And it's going to set you up for an ecstatic explosion of fun and positive emotions, but it's almost like you're gonna really have to work towards something and put your head down and, and, and work and not let your emotions get in the way. This is one of these months, Aries. Your challenge is the Knight of Cups, which has to do with a romantic energy, seeing the world through rose-colored glasses. And I feel like that your emotions can really prevent you from doing the things that you know that you need to do, that God is calling you to do, that your soul is calling you to do, that your angels and spirit guides are calling you to do. This month is very much so a month for you of developing yourself to have a reward at the end. And I'm telling you at the end of the month, there's going to be a reward, but it's not going to come to you if you just act undisciplined, listen to your emotions, and you're just too concerned about passion which is what I typically encourage you to do as an Aries, right? And so with the Knight of Cups being in your challenge and the Four of Swords being in your opportunity, there also is something here about you healing from a challenging love situation in February, 2024, okay? Some of you could have recently gone through a breakup or you could have recently gotten into an argument with your significant other, or there could just be something here about you healing uh, the frequency of emotions and the emotional way that you respond to life in some sort of way, Aries. So we'll see why the Knight of Cups is your challenge. I do feel like there's going to be a test in your love life at the end of the month, but we're going to see in a moment. So let's just continue. In your overall general energy for February 2024, you have the Three of Wands, you have the Fool, and you have the Six of Cups in reverse. So once again, this month is all about you being very a little bit mechanical and robotic when it comes to the day-to-day -day reality, when it comes to discipline and doing what you have to do. And this month is you're setting up for a completely new beginning and a rebirth in your life. The Fool is all about spiritual energy. It's the number zero. It's a complete reset here. So there's definitely a new phase of your life coming uh, to fruition here, but it may feel like as you're watching this right now, or even in the beginning of February, like you're waiting, you're remaining optimistic for a big Something big is happening for you at the end of February. I can tell you that right now, especially in your love life. And there may be a test from the universe about a past lover or someone trying to come back. And the frequency that I, and for those of you that have, um, you know, went through a breakup or, or those of you who are, or dealing with a very difficult situation with your love life, you're going to transform into a completely new person. And the person who is bothering you in love, their jaw is going to drop and they're going to be like, what did you do with Aries? Can I have Aries back? And because this month is all about you transforming yourself, but it's not going to be about you transforming yourself in just Aries passion and re being really good at starting things and not good at finishing things. No, it's all about following through work like a robot. Don't let your emotions get in the way, but also carve out time for your emotions separate from your work. Like almost like you're like, like you're a sim 
Like, I want you to view your life for February as if you're a sim. Okay, there's experience points, my health bar is low, because that's what it is. We are in a simulation. Someone may have created your avatar, and we may just be in sims. You know the game Sims is like where you control these people anyway. The thing that's freaking me out though is the Six of Cups in reverse when it comes to the end of the month, okay? I do feel like there's gonna be a new beginning for you in love, but there's something here that's off or there's something here that may try to come in and wreck this for you. And it could have to do with a past relationship, especially if you're meeting someone new, so hold on. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. When it, and it, it's this is definitely to do with the Moon-Saturn split for a lot of you. In what you don't see coming, you have the Queen of Cups, you have the Ten of Cups, and you have the Queen of Swords. And that's interesting, right? Like you have this ideal reality in the center. The Ten of Cups has to do with your happily ever after, your wish fulfillment, how the ideal emotional situation for your life. And this is what it's on the way to you and what you don't see coming. But this frequency is on the way to you as a result of you not letting your emotions getting in the way of your logic. It's so interesting and synchronistic how this spread is laid out because you see the Queen of Cups having to do with the moon. You see the Queen of Swords, very reminiscent of a Saturn energy, and they're facing in two different directions, but the byproduct and right in the middle, you have this Ten of Cups frequency. So, you know, if you're a man, Aries, there could be a, a choice that you have to make in love you know, between, between two different types of people. If you happen to be a more feminine energy, this is you maybe balancing out these two different aspects of yourself here for you. And this is a very interesting frequency, two court cards and the 10 of cups. So we're gonna have to see why that is your, what you don't see coming. So there could be a lot of moving parts here. Um, and it's very interesting. So let's go ahead and get into your advice now, Aries. Your advice is the eight of cups, the nine of cups, and also the three of cups here. So this is a very, you know, on the one hand, you have the moon opposite Saturn, and I'm telling you to be like robotic. However, you definitely are being robotic for a chance to be not robotic. And this is what I'm saying. You're setting yourself up. You're almost going into nightmare mode, or you're, you're going into a place where you're not letting your emotions control your actions. You're not letting your emotions filter through and, and ruin your discipline or ruin what you tell yourself you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of work, discipline, and saying no. Because Saturn is not about an energy of saying yes, it's about an energy of saying no. And the Eight of Cups is similar to a frequency of saying no. It's about walking away from an emotional experience that is not satisfactory anymore. It's not something that you're going to be forced to walk away from, but it's something that you're going to have to choose. And you're going to have to choose yourself here. You have the three of excuse me, the, the nine of cups here and your advice. So I feel like there's someone here who's not worth your time as well, you know, and I feel like there's a lot of new connections coming in for you. You have the three of cups, which is about a celebration and, you know, having a good social interaction. So for a lot of you, it could be like looking like you're gonna really be disciplined for most of February and at the end of February, you can let loose and you can celebrate that type of thing because, um, there's a quote coming to my mind that partying is weakness for the soul, but only when it's not accompanied by a life of structure and order, and then you can go party, and it's, or then you can go let loose, whatever partying means for you, and it will feel good. But if you just go to a party and your whole life is messed up and you're like, haha, this is it, that's the frequency that's really gonna get you into trouble. So it's all about being more logical knowing that that logic is actually paradoxically going to set you up for your own wish fulfillment here. And for a lot of you here, there's definitely something about love and all of this is very so much related that um, he who cannot obey himself will be mastered. She who cannot obey herself will be controlled or will be told what to do. And I feel like there's a frequency of you really resetting yourself here and that's what the Four of Swords is all about in your opportunity. This is a reset. So make sure you take time out to heal as well. I'm telling you to be robotic. I'm telling you not to let your emotions get in the way. I'm telling you not to be concerned about passion. Here's the thing, like, even with these readings, for example, I'm not always gonna feel passionate when I start the reading, but as the reading gets going, I become more and more passionate because you're just in that moon opposite Saturn. Let's just do the freaking thing. That's the frequency that's gonna get you ahead here. Um, and oppositions also bring you into conflict with other people, usually, and it also has to do with projections. You could be projecting things onto other people. So here's the, my advice as well. Um, there's definitely something about any flaw that you see in someone, make sure you fix it in yourself. And 
the genius is someone who doesn't learn from their own mistakes, but they learn from someone else's mistakes. So in some sort of way, Saturn, limits and lessons, seriousness, opposite the moon, feelings and subconscious. I feel like there's a lot of people around you. There could have been a love situation that went south. There could have been a friendship that went south recently in February that you're just looking at this person and you're like, you have no discipline. You're talking to me about passion all day, but it's bullshit. And that really is rubbing you the wrong way. But instead of flipping out on someone, go within, learn from their mistake and apply into your own life. That's the frequency that I'm getting here. And um, I also feel like there's this element of once you can let go of all this low vibrational crap, you can heal yourself. That's, and I'm getting chills as I'm saying this, you're finally going to connect with people who are on the same wavelength, okay? So instead of hanging around people who party every single night, <laughs> I want to die secretly and that's why I'm at the party and I kill and I'm just drinking and I hate myself or whatever I'm doing I hate myself. No, it's like you're going to boss up and you're going to go party with people who actually know how to party or to know how to have a good time in the right way. So maybe like you're you're you're, you're with people who stay home like you have a cat, you work from home like but then you go out and it's just like this epic time. So it's all about like not being in this free flow of like, let's try to have a good time today. Let's have a good time today. Let's act on my passion today. You know what? Let's stop looking at the future because right now is my passion. And Eckhart told me, totally told me this is the best thing. No, it is about the, it is for you about planning for the future. It's about not giving into short term dopamine right now. And this is the split within you, you know, and what you don't see coming, it could be like you, you're at war with two different parts of yourself. And a lot of the ladies out there, I feel like this is more so you, you know, balancing this opposition energy in your life. So, and especially, yes. So let's just continue Aries and see what um, we got going on. Let's go ahead and clarify why the uh, Four of Swords is your opportunity for... February. Definitely a month of a, a reset for you. A robotic reset. <laughs> but you also got to let loose. Why is the Four of Swords here? Ooh. Yeah, there's something that Spirit is trying to prepare you for that you're not aware of of the magnitude and a lot of healing here that's going to set you up for a brilliant future uh, this month. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so the Four of Swords is clarified by the Four of Swords, the Three of Swords, and also the Wheel of Fortune. So there's a big opportunity for you to really heal yourself and to heal from all heartbreak, okay? The Three of Swords has to do with pain, so I don't know if something recently happened to you or whatever, but there's a lot of trauma that you're going to be healing, and it's a big opportunity. The Wheel of Fortune has to do with a portal of change. It has to do with change. It's spiritual energy, and it also has to do with fate and fated events. And I do feel for you, Aries, that at the end of February, there's going to be a fated event, but you want to play your cards right with this. The reason why the Six of Cups, to me, the Six of Cups is a card of past life relationships, and it's in reverse though. And so there could be a real karmic event. There could be someone that you're interacting with, and it could be not what you expect. You could be going out, whatever. There's, I'm telling you, however it manifests for you, Aries, there's a very karmic, and it doesn't mean bad karmic, but there's something going on that I'm telling you you don't want to mess up or something like that. So let's clarify with the Knight of Cups is your challenge. Now, whether this is a friend that you were observing just BSing themselves or it's a uh, someone that you recently went through a breakup or your current significant other, family member, whoever, the frequency that is the most rewarding thing for you to do in February is that whoever was giving you problems, whoever you were not getting along with, you're gonna transform yourself so deeply through this moon opposite Saturn thing that the next time that you talk to this person or the next time they see you or the next time they hear about you if you're in no contact, their jaw is gonna go on the floor like, what did you do with Aries? This is, this is what I would be suggesting for you to do. So let's go ahead and clarify why. And they're not even, that's the best feeling. They don't even know what to say. They're gonna be like stumbling on their words like, uh, uh, what, can, can I, 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 I. <laughs> 
All right, that's what I really feel. So let's clarify why the Knight of Cups is your challenge. And the Knight of Cups in your challenge is like, don't just entertain love offers right now. Like you really, that's not, yeah. Oh, mm. well, the Knight of Cups in your challenge is gonna be, is clarified by the 10 of uh, Wands and the five of cups. So there's definitely something to do with romance and idealism that may be very intense for you. And I, I feel like this is an energy of someone, I don't know who it is. You know, you could have had an idealistic relationship with someone. You could have been seeing them as you wanted to see them. Whether this is a significant other dating or whoever, I just sense it's someone that was like, you feel it's like a very significant relationship for you that recently ended. It could have recently ended. And I feel like it's just you letting go and you clearing that energy out of your life. This could even be with the your opportunity being the Four of Swords, clarified by the Four of Swords to the Three of Swords to the Wheel of Fortune. This is all about clearing a soul contract and a soul tie. And maybe not going back to it, even if someone's jaw is dropping on the floor, because the Six of Cups in reverse next to the Fool is like someone really wants a new beginning with you, especially when you transform yourself. They're going to be like, this is not fair. Why weren't you like this when we were like, or whatever, but it's just, they're, they're not capable. There's also something here about, yeah, yeah. So let's just continue, Aries. Um, let's clarify what a Fool is here in, uh, your overall general energy. Yeah. Much more balanced situations coming in for you. Um, but there's not a lot of fire in this reading. And it's so interesting. Like the, the thing that I, like with, when I saw the Saturn opposite moon thing, I was like, don't talk to me about passion this month, Aries. It's not gonna get you what you think. You know what I mean? And now I understand that I sound like one of these, <laughs> these people that are just like, passion, don't follow your passion, get an oil rig. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But the fool is clarified by the knight, excuse me, the page of wands and also the six of pentacles. So there's a lot of balance and there's a lot of fun coming into your life. The page of wands is a youthful exploratory energy that's pretty open to life. And I feel like this is like, there's a quote like, only those who are like children will enter the kingdom of heaven. And so this is definitely about resetting your childlike spirit. Um, but it's interesting. It's almost like the way that you're going to do that is through the moon opposite Saturn thing where it's almost like you're going to set yourself up for your inner child to come out to play instead of being like, I have to be passionate 24 seven or else my inner child is going to freak out. It's like sometimes if you don't discipline your inner child, it's, it's going to be a spoiled brat within you is really what I sense. So let's clarify why the Six of Cups is in reverse. And this is more of the karmic thing that you're letting go, but there's also a new, per like there's also, man. Ooh, this could have to do with um, maybe some of you like multiple people, like, hold on. Why is the Six of Cups in reverse here, Aries? In, all right, what's going on here? I feel like there's, okay. Whenever like so many jumpers come out like that, it's saying there's a lot to this card. So whatever I say when I'm clarifying the Six of Cups in reverse, it's telling me there's a lot contained in that energy. And I feel like it's you clearing soul contracts for new ones to come in. But if you, you, you must really be like a little bit strict, disciplined, and make Legos in February, I'm telling you. So let's clarify why the Six of... And that card came out before. Hmm. There could be someone that's really jealous of the way that you improved yourself and is trying to sabotage things for you, you know, not letting go of an ending. Like someone wants an ending with you, but they can't let it go. Is kind of what I feel as well. Like they would rather be done with it, but they can't be because, the, because of how you're improving yourself. The Six of Cups in reverse is clarified by the Five of Wands, the World, and also the Judgment card. And I feel like um, there's definitely something about disconnecting from an old contract because someone is just gonna be around you for the wrong reasons. And, uh, that's just what I really feel. So, but there's also something about an upgrade. The Six of Cups in reverse is clarified by the Judgment card to the world. This is definitely about you surrounding yourself with a new soul contract that's very much upgraded. And this is gonna naturally be the byproduct of this moon opposite Saturn thing for you, I'm telling you. So let's also just, hmm.
I'm telling you, there's going to be someone who's really going after your upgraded frequency. And it's like, this is an outward manifestation of like demons. Like whenever you're trying to upgrade, you're trying to level up, you're trying to become more disciplined. There's always going to be these demons, these pendulums that are like ruining. Like I remember when I first started a YouTube channel, I would go outside to film and I'm like, this is the thing for my soul. This is the discipline thing I have to do. Every time I would put, I would put record on, a neighbor would start mowing the lawn or something would happen that it would get so noisy that the video could not possibly be recorded. And that is literally a test from God. That is literally pendulums entering things to mess with you in ways that you know not. Here's an example of this. Have you ever been walking behind someone on a sidewalk and as you go to pass them, they, they're on their phone. They don't even know you're there and they step right. So like you're walking behind someone on a the sidewalk, they're in front of you, you try to pass them and they're like unconsciously going to the right. And then you're like, all right, let me try to step around them to the left and they block your way to the left. And they don't know that they're doing it but because humans live in a semi-conscious state. Humans are not fully present. The house is not occupied. Visitors can enter in. I know I'm occultly scaring a lot of you, but we are a vessel. We do channel. I channel beings all the time on this channel. And things happen in mystical ways to control you, to let, to make you forget about your discipline and to bring you into conflict with other people in ways that you know not. It's called pendulums. This is how the world works. And you need to be on the lookout for this and push through that tendency to just get emotional. Oh my God, I tried to pass that person and they tried to block me and you're personalizing it and you're being too passionate. It's not about that. It's about metaphysics and understanding how these realities stack up on another one another Aries okay so um hmm hmm let's go ahead and clarify the eight of cups what is it that you need to let go of what is it that spirit is calling you to let go of well I feel like casual social interaction. Sorry about that, Aries, the camera died, but there's definitely something about walking away from anyone that's trying to be too casual with you or someone who takes life very casually. There's something, once again, about the Knight of Cups in your challenge, someone who is basically casual in life or like they view the world through like a very demented philosophy of like, just act on your passion, bro. And like my passion is going to magically manifest everything in my life at the exact right moment and you don't even know. And it's like, some people are not gonna make it in this life. Some people have dreams and you can see their potential. You can see everything that they have, that they could have. But I feel like you're, you're dealing with someone who just might not make it. And there's also something about in love though, someone was trying to be casual with you you then go and transform your entire life, their jaws on the floor. And like, they could still have the frequency of like, well, let's just see and like, let's just be casual. This is about you letting go of casual energy and making room for something really special in terms of your wish fulfillment. But it's all about reset, moon opposite Saturn. So with that being said, Aries, this ain't a war of jealousy or a petty competition. It's a question of your destiny. It's time for a decision.